Thank you. Thanks for your attention, folks. Hope everyone is enjoying themselves tonight. We've got a lot of exciting program ahead. But before we introduce our next wine star, just a quick shout out, wow, to all of the Wine Star Award nominees who are here. 60 strong, yeah. Emma. Wow. Congratulations, nominees, for your prestigious nomination. And thank you so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Here is our, our first mixologist of the year. As some of you may know, we have a category uh, called Mixologist of the Year. And the first one was in 2012. And it was a, a wonderful lady, Charlotte Voisse, who is going to introduce a legend of the world of cocktails. Charlotte, welcome. Thank you, Adam. Without Del de Graff, the cocktail and spirits industry wouldn't be what it is today. Reinstating the former glory of cocktail culture, one fresh juice, proper glassware, precise technique, ingredients made from scratch, cocktail at a time. Dale, you were famously handed the chance to bring cocktails back to the bar at the Rainbow Room in the early 1980s. I've often wondered if you had any idea then what an impact your work would have much uh, years later on. But it wasn't just about the drinks. Dale's ability is the whole art of bartending, the storytelling, the welcome from a warm and humble character with a genuine love for cocktails. On behalf of bartenders the world over, Dale, thank you. Can you hear the noise in the background over there? You cannot forget that these places are about a good time. People don't go to bars for any other reason than to escape a little bit from what may be a difficult day, difficult life. We can't forget that. You still have to remember why that guy is sitting across the bar. I think that if you ask anybody here uh, what started the contemporary cocktail movement in America, the answer is simple, uh, two words. Dale DeGroff. Dale DeGroff. Dale DeGroff. Dale DeGroff. Dale DeGroff. Dale DeGroff is King Cocktail. Dale DeGroff is the father of the cocktail movement. Everything we see today in the United States of America and the world, the reemergence of the cocktail culture is due to Dale's efforts. Well, I came to New York from the University of Rhode Island where I was studying in the theater department. <laughs> Off to New York, right? Become a star. I got a waiter's job at Charlie O's in the early 70s. In 1974, they were looking for a bartender. I lied and said I was one. And from that moment on in 1974, I've been involved as a bartender. And now I run around the country teaching young bartenders how to do this stuff, inventing drinks, and generally bar flying it up as much as I can. He's amassed so many amazing stories from his many decades working in the cocktail industry and you know to hear him play a tune and sing a song and um, you know talk about his experience behind the bar is really an amazing experience to witness. When you talk about the family tree of cocktails you need to start talking about Del DeGraw. He was a bartender at the Rainbow Room in the 80s and he really was one of the first ones to introduce the idea of fresh juices, you know, moving away from the soda gun, moving away from the artificial ingredients. We tried to recreate that era with our food and our drink and our costumes and everything. We had Ramos Fizzes, Between the Sheets, uh, Caipirinhas, Pisco Sours, things that hadn't been seen in a lot of years. We tried to bring back another era in our bar and we succeeded. Mm -hmm. A great bartender is a great people person, and you only have to look at Dale to understand that. You walk into a bar, the bartender sees you, you order your drink, and the drink appears. That's community, and that's what makes a great bar, is community. It is a community of people who gather together, as we started talking about in the very beginning, to celebrate their births, their deaths, their marriages, their loves, whatever. A good day, like today. <laughs> Recipient of the 2019 Wine Star Award for Cocktail Legend, Dale DeGroff. Uh, 
Um, uh, to Adam and Jay and all of the staff at the uh, Wine Enthusiast Magazine, thank you very much for this extraordinary honor. Uh, in 2009, a bartender won a James Beard Award. And in 2010, the James Beard Awards added a new award to their list of awards called the Best, the Outstanding Bar Program. 2011, Wine Enthusiasts created a new award called Mixologist of the Year. <clears throat> so um, finally, the cocktail, sort of the bad boy renegade of the culinary and hospitality business, uh, was welcomed home and honored. It was lovely. Um, I'm standing here today because of a man named Joe Baum, and many of you know Joe. Uh, I met Joe on several occasions in the early 70s at extraordinary iconic restaurants like the Four Seasons, La Fonda del Sol, Forum of the Twelve Caesars, basically because my best friend's older brother was a partner in Lois Holland and Callaway Joe's advertising agency, and we got to tag along. Um, so in 1985, Joe hired me, a small fine dining restaurant called Aurora, some of you remember it probably, and uh, I, he wanted a classic cocktail program. Uh, there was a two-star Michelin chef who loved champagne and the wines of Burgundy, and I was confused. <laughs> then one day, <clears throat> Benny Goodman was sitting at my bar, and Ray Wellington, the sommelier, came over and told me that he was going to be the opening orchestra for the famous Rainbow Room. That was the first I heard of the Rainbow Room. And when I found out about it, I wanted the gig. So I laid out a cocktail menu program to Joe. Eventually he liked it. Eventually I got the gig. Um, well, over the years, Joe has worked with a lot of people who shared his vision. His vision of an American cuisine, his vision of why, does all, why do all the four-star chefs have to, or three-star chefs have to be French and Italian. He worked with James Beard in the beginning and as his consultant on menus. Uh, another one who shared his vision was Kevin Zraeli, our friend, and who has created so many young psalms over the years. And I shared Joe's vision, and I was lucky to be there. So I think probably my main achievement was to make it OK to be a professional bartender again. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>